It seems like each week we see the release of a new AI code editor, and to be honest with you, they all seem to do pretty much the exact same thing. Now that's why me making this video is a little bit of a surprise, because I recently found an editor that works significantly better than all of the other ones that I've used, actually works differently and has some new features, and in my opinion is really changing the game when it comes to AI coding. Now this code editor is called Windsurf, it comes from the Codium team, and they sent me exclusive access to it about two weeks ago, and since then I've been using it for all of my projects, and to be honest with you, it's pretty game changing. It has a lot of new features, and I think you guys are going to find it really interesting. Now, I do need to disclose that I did team up with them for this video. They gave me exclusive access before this was released. But if you guys want to check out this editor and use it completely for free, then click the link in the description and we're going to dive into a quick demo and I'll show you what makes this different than the hundreds of other AI code editors you've probably seen before. So if you just want to see the demo, skip forward about a minute, but I do quickly want to explain to you what makes this different and why you should even care about this editor. Now, this is really the first agentic IDE. Now, what that means is that this is combining AI agents with co-pilots. Now, a lot of the other AI code editors that you've used before rely really heavily on co-pilots. Now, these are great and they collaborate really well with humans, but they're not good at doing kind of large scale independent tasks. A lot of times they struggle to keep up with the context and they can't really understand exactly what you were doing previously and kind of continue with that flow. Now, the really cool feature and the first thing that blew me away about this editor is that it has something called flows. Now, this actually allows you to simply tell the editor to just continue you what you were doing and it will keep track of everything that you did previously so how you were editing a file the main changes that you made even if you're doing something relatively complicated and it will just continue down that kind of flow of consciousness and actually understand what it is that you want to do next now of course it has all of the co-pilot features as well you have a chat you can chat in line you can get command recommendations and it can actually utilize various tools so unlike your standard co-pilots where they just give you a bunch of text or maybe they just modify some files this editor actually has agentic capabilities. That means that it can run commands on your behalf. It can access different commands in your terminal, like grepping different files, searching through directory structures. And it really just goes beyond what I've seen in other AI code editors and really performs significantly better. Anyways, let me get into the demo and just show you how it works because I think it's going to blow you away compared to a lot of the other stuff you've seen. So I figured the best way to demo this is just to show you how I've been using it on a real world application. Now I've got this movie application. I actually made this for another YouTube tutorial. Funny enough, uh, this editor was what made most of this code for me before I kind of presented it online. And pretty much what we can do in here is we can favorite different movies. We can search for a movie like I don't know, Hulk or something, and you can see that they come up. Now we're just using a public movie API and we're kind of storing the different favorites in local storage. It's very simple, but it's missing some features. Like I can't click directly into the movie and see all of the movie details. And I want to show you how in just a few minutes here, I can add those features using this editor. So I've got Windsurf open here. Again, you can check it out for free. Just click that link in the description. And I want to begin by just making a feature where when I click on this movie, it opens up like a movie detail page. So I'm just going to go right into Cascade here and you can see that I can toggle between writing and chatting. So if I want to ask it some kind of question and I don't want it to modify any files, I'll turn it to chat mode. And if I want it to write two different files and actually generate code, then I'll just put it to write mode. So we'll just ask it, can you please make it so that when I click on a movie, I get the details for that movie. And let's just see what it gives us. This is a very vague prompt, and I actually want to be very vague intentionally so you can see how much better this performs, especially with weaker prompts compared to some of the other AI code editors. So it generated a bunch of code for me, but right away noticed that it was actually able to analyze the files that were currently in my directory without me having to manually tag them or add the context myself. Now, this is one thing that I noticed a lot of the other editors struggled with. I would have to manually specify what files to look at. And when the project got larger and larger, all of the context just became very confusing and difficult to keep track of. Anyways, it shows me that I've got four files here that I need to keep track of. So it's made this movie details.jsx. Okay, this looks fine to me, so let me just accept that. Let's go to this one. We've got a CSS file. Okay, very good. We've got the new route added to my app.jsx. Okay, and then where's our last file? I missed one. Uh, this one here, so when we press on it, it should actually allow me to navigate. Okay, sweet. So I'm going to accept all of those. And now my server's not running. So actually, let me just use the AI to help me run this. So let's say for some reason I didn't know how to run my server. I was using some random project. I can just directly go here and ask it, hey, can you run my project? 
Now, because this has access to an AI agent, it's actually able to run commands on my behalf. So it's giving me this NPM start command. I mean, let's just try it. I know this isn't the right command and let's see what happens. Okay, it says there's some error here and I'll just say, continue. So rather than telling it, hey, this was an error and give me another command. If I just say continue, it should be able to see what went wrong. And it says, I noticed the npm start command failed. Let me check your package.json file. Okay, perfect. And it says, ah, I see they're using Vite. Okay, do you want to use npm run dev? Yes, I do. So I'm just going to accept that. It's going to run the command for us. And it will actually run a background process directly in this chat window, which should now load this up. So if I refresh the page now, you can see now it's showing up. There's some issue with the CSS, so we can ask, ask it to fix that. But when I click on the movie here, it is bringing me to the movie page. Now there's an error. So obviously we're going to have to go fix that. But you can see that it's um, still kind of doing at least partly what I asked it for. So let's ask it to fix that issue. Uh, I'm going to go and just close this for one second and go into my movie detail.jsx. Now I notice right away that the issue is that it's using this environment variable when actually I just have my API key hard coded in a file. So I'm just going to copy this here. I'm going to add this to the chat. You can see it just highlights these lines. I'm going to say, hey, can you move this to the api.js file and fix the variable for the API key? Okay, so hopefully that'll work for us. Let's give that a second. Okay, so it looks like it did that successfully. I can see now that it's moved this over. So let me accept this and then let's go into our other file. Now we have this here, it's using the right variable. Okay, accept, save. Let's refresh. And when we click on this now, you can see that it's loading the movie. Yes, there's an issue with the image, so we'll ask it to fix that. But it's showing how long it is, the rating, the overview, some tags for it, and all of this stuff. So overall, pretty good. Uh, now let's ask it to fix the CSS. There seems to be some issue with the, let's see, with the CSS for the movie poster. It takes up like half width. Can you fix this? Okay, so looks like it made some changes here. So let's just accept those and go back. And now we can see that it looks a little bit better. It's still not exactly what I wanted, but for now that's good enough. And you can see it's kind of showing the information here for our movies, perfect. Now I am able to favorite these movies. Okay, great. And then if I go to the favorites page, I can see my favorite movies. So I could continue adding features here, but I wanna show you some more cool stuff that this can do. So maybe what I wanna do now is add another feature here or something, and I wanna allow the user to maybe rate these movies directly on the page. So let me just come here. I'm gonna hit control I, that's gonna bring up the kind of inline prompt. And I'm gonna say, can you add some code? to allow the user to rate the movie. Okay, so let's see what it does for this. Okay, perfect, so we will accept this. Okay, so this is fine, but I kind of want to refactor this. So I'm just gonna hit Control L here and bring this over to Cascade. I'm gonna say refactor this into the component body, not the JSX. And let's see what this gives us. Okay, cool, so I'm just going to accept that. Perfect, let's save and refresh. And now if we go back here, we can rate the movie. But when I click on rating, it brings me into the movie, which I don't really want. So obviously we could go and we could fix that bug. Now I don't wanna just keep doing all of these features for you, but what I do wanna do is show you some other interesting things that this editor can do. So let me make this a little bit larger. And what I might wanna do, for example, is generate some commands to test my different API calls. So what I can do is I can just ask Cascade, I can say, hey, can you generate some commands to test my API calls? And it's gonna give me actually the curl commands and allow me just to run them directly inside of here to test them out and make sure they're working. Now this is great because I don't know about you guys, I hate having to memorize all of these different commands and a lot of times it's quite annoying to do that. So here you can see that it finds this, I can just accept that. It actually gives me the results right in line here. And then I could even use these results and I can ask it, hey, continue, take these results and based on the results and generate you know, a new page that displays all of this information for me. So being able to generate the commands uh, is very interesting. And one of the cool things about this, and you can see here it says, finally, let's test the movie details with a specific ID. Okay, let's test this. And you see that same thing we get all of the information. So the command generation is quite cool. Now, of course, we can also just write code ourselves. So I can say something like export and maybe get now playing movies. And you can see this actually knows what the correct call is for the API. I believe this is correct, at least. I'm gonna save that. And now if I open up the chat, I can just type continue and it should test the API for me now based on what it was doing before. So it says, let's test the new get uh, playing, playing movies endpoint, okay. 
So let's accept that. You can see that it gives us this information and now it's saying, okay, let's continue. Let's actually use this endpoint that you just wrote. So now it's made a bunch of changes and that's all just based on this one function that I wrote. So because it knew what I was doing previously, which was testing the endpoints, it knows what I was working on. It has access to the context and it saw what I just wrote. It's now gone ahead and added this to my homepage. So if I go here, you can see it shows me now playing. Obviously the CSS is a little bit messed up, but if we keep scrolling, and we go down here let's keep going there is also a section i believe that will say popular movies so yeah we have the popular movies and we have the movies that are now playing so a lot of those will be the same of course but you get the idea okay so you can see now playing keep scrolling and we get the popular movies as well so that's the feature that I really like about this is that continue because it just does allow me to kind of stay in that flow state. And because it knows what I'm doing, it kind of predicts what I want to do next. Now it's also doing that when I'm writing code with the kind of AI auto completion here. Now, just as another interesting example here, a lot of times you're going to make a repetitive change. Like for example, I'm going to add maybe a doc string here or something. And I'm going to say, you know, search movies by query. Okay. So I've made this change. And now if I just open up the chat, and I say continue, it's going to notice that I added this doc string and it's going to say, let me help improve the API service by adding the proper JS doc comments and error handling for all the functions. So now it should go and modify this file and make that same change to all of the things that are relevant. And that's again, like just the really interesting thing about this editor that I haven't seen before that does seem to actually work very well. So here you can see it's handling all the errors. Now it adds the correct JS doc strings. And then of course I can accept all of this and here we go. Now, of course, there's a lot of other interesting stuff, but the last thing I'll show you is that you can actually just get it to generate commands for you directly in your terminal. So for example, I can hit control I and say something like generate the command to create a new Git origin. I know I spelled this horribly incorrect, but that's fine. And then it says get remote at origin, find some project that makes sense, react in one project. Okay, fine. And obviously we can, you know, change this Git repo because that's probably not the one that we want to add. But if you just want a quick command, you don't need to uh, kind of copy it or you don't need to look it up anymore, I guess. So you can just go in here, ask for it, and it can really quickly generate that command for you. So anyways, guys, that is the quick demo here of this code editor. Honestly, it does have significantly better performance than I've seen out a lot of the other ones. It is free to use right now, so I recommend at least trying it out. And that continue feature and the fact that it's really syncing all of the context is really what makes this stand out to me. Sure, it has a lot of features we've seen in the other editors, but that one is really a game changer. Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and I will see you in the next one.